Hi, today we're going to run through using the GDS2 software with the Mongoose Pro GM interface. With this interface and a low cost subscription for GDS2 software, we have full dealer, dealer level diagnostics. Uh, note for programming, this is a separate software. You need an SPS subscription as well, if, as well if you want to do programming, but you can also use it through the Mongoose lead. Um, the, GD, the GDS2 software is is for the models from the launch of the insignia and and any new models thereafter and for the description you can register for daily monthly or yearly prices from 10 euro for a day up to 130 euro for a year you can see more information on this on gme infotech's website um, and these prices we're talking about is for opal and Vauxhall. You can see here that we have seven days remaining in the lease. Um, we have a we have a full year subscription. So what happens when you purchase a subscription? You install the software on your PC, and um, every fourteen days, then you have to go back to the site to renew the lease. So in seven days' time, we just have to go back to GME Infotech's website and just run through a, a procedure to renew the lease. But if you're getting a year subscription, you only pay once, but you have to go back every 14 days to renew the lease. Um, but the, the main point is this software is actually installed on the computer when we're using it now. We're not using it through the internet. So once it's installed, you don't need internet connection for 14 days. You can use away in the software. And when the lease expires, then you have to go back to the website to renew the lease. So now we're in, in the software. Um, we already have it selected, but we'll, ju we'll just run through it. So to, se to select the interface, you just go to preferences. And you can see here we have three different options because we have used three different devices with this software before. We used Aholand, iScan 2WT, and uh, Cardag M. This is Drutech's bigger, bigger in, uh, J2534 interface. But today we're using the Mongoose Pro GM2. So go OK. This message will always come up no matter what interface you're using. Basically, it's saying if there's a problem with communications or whatever, not to contact GM or to, not to contact Opel to contact the manufacturer of the lead or of the interface. So now we're, we're, we're that's set up and ready to go. There is some other settings here, but um, you can have a look at this yourself. So we just go diagnostics. So straight away it picked up the car. We didn't have to give it any details. Um, we're, we're, we're connected to a 2013 Astra J 1.7 diesel. So we'll just go enter. So you can see then that quickly it picked up the vehicle. So you see down here it picked up the VIN of the car and uh, some of the spec of the car or the vehicle configuration so here then we have <coughs> different options module diagnostics vehicle diagnostic system diagnostics and session manager so we'll just go to uh, the start we'll just go vehicle diagnostics so if we take this selection it goes vehicle dtc information so it's going to scan the whole car all the control units on the car Again, you can see it running through this. The ones coming up with the green ticks are the control units that we're connected that it's connecting to. The ones with red is no communication, so it's they're, they're either not fitted on the car or a problem with it. But in this case, we know they're not fitted because um, there's no problem with this vehicle. And um, over here, then you can see if there's any error stored, so there's no no file stored in it. Sorry, we can print this, create a report from it, add book bookmarks, do all different things. Uh, as you can see, it, it keeps refreshing through the, the list of codes there. Every, every few seconds, it keeps running through them. So if there was any DTCs stored, we go here to clear them. And then you select the DTCs you want to clear. But in this case, there's no DTCs to clear. Uh, the other thing we can do then is read vehicle wide DTCs and ID information. This is going to read all the DTCs and the ID of all the control units on the car with software versions, hardware versions, part numbers, etc. We can show you this in a moment then when it's finished running through it. 
so now you see it'll automatically display this page so you can print this if you want to get any details off it or show it to the customer so we have all the car details uh, each module then will have a separate list so we have the chassis number the store the part number um, date programs software versions it's on hardware numbers all sorts of different information here so each each, each control unit then it will give you all this information and close out this go back uh, next thing then we can go to say module diagnostics so this is all the, the list of control units uh, not all these may, may not be fitted to the vehicle as we've seen earlier when it done a scan of the whole car so say we can go engine control module we can read trouble codes but there's no need because we know there's none stored identification basically just giving us the details again the hardware details software details other information we can go data display so they do the data display in different groups uh, some of the data will be repeated in different groups but we just go to engine data enter so now we can view the data like this in a in in this format um again you can select the ones you want you can pick and choose whichever readings you want to look at or you can look at it in a graphical format so here we have the full the full list of data in, in the graphical format or if you want to just pick one reading just to focus on one reading we can go to um, or sorry when we're here then there's loads of different things we can do here and with the display we can change the background in it we can show the different types of lines we'll just start the car Click on a read and then we can lock that read. And then we can go to the line graph and just look at that reading on its own. Then when we're here we can do loads of other things. We can expand the, the time base. the range the height the height range on the reading for changing the reading from a uh, metric to uh, imperial units Go back here again. so I just more or less hit this the, the data list again then we can pick it in different groups so if we go exhaust aftermarket data um, we can go, go here we have different readings here and mostly ones that we'd be concerned with if we want to look at DPF data so same situation you can pick you can select readings lock them and we can go line graph so we can see we have both of them on the on the on the graph here and it's showing us here the different colors so green is DPF differential pressure and this one is a uh, blue is the exhaust gas temperature sensor so that's pretty much it on live data you can see huge list there full dealer level list um, very fast and here then we have control functions these are like activations 
So here, for example, we put EGR valve. So in this case, we can act the EGR valve when the engine is running, and then we can watch what's happening with, with, with various other readings when we activate the EGR valve. For example, if we wanted to make sure that the EGR valve wasn't sticking or stuck open, or so we can select the, the MAF for the airflow sensor, so we lock it here. So you can see the reading here of the, air, the airflow meter. So now we'll activate the EGR valve. When the EGR valve opens, the airflow meter reading should reduce because it'll be taking in less air, it'll be using more of the recir recirculating more. So command state 10%, 20%, and you see the air mass meter reading dropping. So we can go back up should start to increase then there must be a read so it's very useful this uh, the, they call this a uh, bi-directional control so we can control something and view the readings at the same time so, so a load of other activations here and here then we have configurations and resets uh, learn functions on most of the newer Opel vehicles there's loads of different relearns on them for example if you change the clutch pedal position sensor change replace crank sensor any of these items you have to you, you, when you fit a new one you have to relearn them reset functions this is uh, when you're replacing the, the DPF filter replacing the DPF pressure sensor it's the engine oil quality reset, exhaust gas temperature sensor reset, injector injector coding here for the DPF regeneration. Just going to airbags, they have a restraint sensing and diagnostic module. Again, same information, identification information, data display. So we can look at the resistance of vari various parts of the airbag system. Um, just to activate the airbag indicator. Just control reset function. So this is to configure a new module if you're replacing the airbag module. So that's, that's pretty much it, as you can see it's um, very straightforward to use, very fast and full full dealer level diagnostics. Um, so can, see, can we go back just to show you the models that are, that are, that are listed. So here you can see the, the various, various models. Some of them are repeat here for different years. So you have the Insignia, Astra J, Anteria, Ampere, Combo D, Zephyra C, Adam, uh, Cascada, Mocha, and uh, so basically any new models after the launch of the Zephyra will be in will be in this new software. For the older vehicles, then you, what Opel, Opel and Vauxhall used to use, use was a handheld diagnostic tool called Tech2 but um, you can also diagnose these vehicles with the mongoose lead with software that GM use also called Tech2 Win um, but again this is a separate separate subscription uh, so that's about it um, on this and thanks for watching and keep an eye out for other videos